WTFB Radio. I am your host, Charlie Machine, alongside the Empress Chanel Shante. It's been a minute since I've seen her face. What up, Nelly? It's been more than a minute. It's been It's been long? many minutes. How long? Yeah, it's been a lot of minutes. Y'all thought y'all got rid of me, huh? Niggas thought you quit. Niggas yeah, was asking me. Yeah, I'm happened. here. Like, Bells was here last week. Niggas didn't know what the fuck was going on. I know. It's still a family affair, but I'm of here. Of course, of course, of course, man. I'm glad to see you here, but... This is Choose What the Future Brings, man. We are black culture through music. Um, always inside of, well, not always inside of Exposed TV Studios. As, as you've seen last week, we did a one-off for my man, Hunting Round Cotto. But, you know, this is the home, man. Exposed TV Studios, man. One of the number one, ex, um, you know, production studios in mass. If you need a video, this is your studio. Oh, you ain't going to cash it. The, the, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I don't need. cash it. It's definitely like home, though. If it's you, home. Sense of belonging. You have a I'm privacy. Saying? Like, you can sit on the toilet seat here at Exposed. You, you know, know what I'm saying? How you go other places. You got to squat and, you know, at other people's house and I can't public relate. restrooms. You don't got to squat here. I can't relate. <laughs> but um, uh, <laughs> you need a video. You need a Red, <laughs> Red X series. You need a photo <laughs> shoot. You need B-rolls. You need all types of shit, man. We can get you cars. We can get you drones. We can get you all types of stuff. Mm-hmm. Ho- uh, holla at the boss lady, Kateria Cologne, man, and the yes. creative director, Matt Thomas. Um, You know, some of the new parents, man. So, um, you know, Exposed TV Studios, man. If you need a studio, we are your studio, man. Yeah, come um, put in some work and release that creative energy. For real, man. We need that. We need that. And um, this is sponsored by Punch Pods. Yes. Pack with a punch. I'm sitting next to the number one pod dealer right here, man. You know what I'm saying? Legally. I don't think um, there's any other pod dealer. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, if you have a sweet tooth. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you have a sweet tooth, uh, you know, you got the bunchies. I know you niggas be getting high. They be all types of mm-hmm. fucking exotic weed now, nigga. Like, I don't smoke weed no more, my nigga. But I've been, I've been, all the names is ridiculous now, nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and everybody got their own strength. Yeah, they do. You know what I mean? We got to. We got to get some CWTF weed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> on dogs, nigga. Like, we got to get our own shit. I uh, like that. <laughs> CWTF Cash weed, will be the first right? one smoking it. On dogs. That's his, that's his strain. You I know like what that. Um, but if you got you got the munchies, man, holla at your pie dealer. Chanel Shante, man. The creator of Punch Pies, man. Um, what was the flavors you got? Let, let, let's say the flavors. Heavyweight cheesecake. Uh-huh. Um, TK Oreo. Uh-huh. TK Oreo 2. That's uh-huh. the vanilla version. What Ooh. else we got? We got the brownie trifle. And I have a couple of summer flavors coming out. So Summer flavors, too? Yeah. Yeah. You got summer flavors? Yeah. I'm trying okay. to expand and, you know, you rebrand know. and build the line. So I like that. Y'all will see. Okay. I like that, man. Um, if this is your first time on CWTFB Radio, man, you on YouTube, I need you to click that subscribe button, man. Mm. Turn them notifications on. Every time we drop some content on Monday and Wednesdays, you know we're going to drop it for you. Um, and you're going to know what the fuck's going on within the city um, and within the scene. Um, shout out to all of our subscribers. Shout out to all of our, uh, you know, the people who are tapping in with Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Our Heart Radio, all of the above, man. We love y'all. And we appreciate the continued support, man. We got more for y'all week over week over week over week. Yes. Um, damn. Chanel, where you been? Damn, damn. <laughs> I've been in these streets. You've been in these streets. I've been outside, says. as always. You know, been doing... A little bit of here, a little bit of there, indulging in a few things. But these last four weeks have been very eye-opening. Yeah. You know, it's been enlightening. I didn't really expect it in such a short amount of time. So I'm just going through a period of transformation. Kind of like a butterfly. I feel like you're constantly growing. I am. Like you, I am. You always just like peeling back layers. Like I do. Eight, anytime I talk to Chanel, she's like, that was that was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> like, it that, is, that, that's, that, that was the old me. I, I'm really big on anything not growing is dead. So you know that. You've known yeah. me for such a long time. So I've been just isolating from myself. From the depths of hell. Yep. And then surrounding myself <laughs> with elite energy. I don't got time for that other shit. And, you know, just preparing myself for the life that, you know, I'm trying to rebuild. Like the butterfly. And like, you're literally going to have to meet me again and again. Yeah. And again and again. Yeah. And that's what I love about being like a human, unlike a butterfly. Like we can transform as many times as we want. So I'm like just that. here for it. Butterfly's dying. That's the rap. Chanel Shante, nice to meet you. Charlie Machine. Get to Voice know of me. the city. <laughs> Have you met me? Not yet. You, you might have you might have heard me yawn. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm, I'm one of them niggas. I'm one of, I'm one of those you might have heard me yawn type niggas. You know what I'm saying? I know like, you are. You, you, you definitely a, a toot your own you know horn type of nigga. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fact, is it like a little right. toot toot or is it a beat beat? That's like, just like, gang, gang, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you, know, you need a fucking 18 wheeler for this shit, yeah? Yeah, no, but I'm happy to be here. I miss I miss this space, this vibe. Now I'm happy to have you here. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you for coming back. Yeah, I didn't quit. quit. She almost quit. No, I did not. She put in her two weeks. No, I did not. <laughs> when I quit, you will know it because I will not be seen ever again. I won't be around. But no, I mean, whatever, I'm not nigga. Quit. You ain't gonna quit, nigga. We gonna go to your house and record a whole podcast in your crib, nigga. But what if my house is with like the kids, Cali or London, nigga? Or... We we pull up. Fuck I... you talking about. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But um, how, you know, like any anything like that you wanted to talk about from the last um, you know, week. Two weeks, three weeks, four weeks since we've seen you. Things have just been rolling. I don't have anything specific. No. No. Just yeah. Nothing in the world that you wanted to address. Too much in the world. It's overwhelming. I don't got time. <laughs> Too much in the world. I don't have world. enough mental. It's space. over. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just here for. I'm here for the guests. I'm here for the ratings. I'm ready okay. for all of that. A um, couple things I want to touch on um, was this past sunday was father's day and juneteenth at the same damn time yes it was um shout out to all the good fathers out there man shout out to y'all niggas man the good dad gang the good dad gang um i was definitely wearing my good dad gang merch on on sunday shout out my man terminology man you see his sneaker man he got with the ewings like the patrick ewings he got like a good dad gang patrick ewing sneaker term i need i need that same energy for the moms for mother's day i need the good dad Good mom gang. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know yeah. We need that. Yeah, we, we love y'all. Yeah, but what you the sneakers look like? The sneakers, they, they're like the Ewings, but they're black and they got like the Good Dad Gang logo on it and shit. Like, you got to look it up, man. I'm going a, I'm to a throw it up on the YouTube. Like, when, Put that in my saying. notes because I'll forget. Um, but I thought that was fire. Um, my man got his own sneaker. I mean, niggas from Boston, you know, got their own sneaker, my name. Well, nah. not Boston, but Mass. Lawrence. Law Town. Shout out my man Terminology. Yeah. Fucking mass legend, man. Um, and he also just dropped a, a, a project with Paul Wall recently. Yeah. Man. Um, we didn't rate it because, you know, Paul Wall's not from Boston, so uh, or Mass. Um, but so but, what? But it was, fire. it was fire. It was fire. It was fire. I think fire. we should. I loved it. I, loved I think it. we should. I do. All right, but neither here nor there. <laughs> right, and then maybe right we now. can get Paul Wall up here. Paul Wall, baby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm on that nigga say I'm posted up. I'm, I'm on the block posted up like a mailbox. Oh, That's my gosh. nigga right there. You know what I'm saying? That was the error. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Father's Day was amazing. What'd you um, do? Uh, I went to the Red Sox game. Oh, yeah. You, did um, you know, elite shit only. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, got the invite. Uh, you know what I mean? From, you know, niggas who's like curating this shit out here. Okay. Um, Is that where you got the shirt from? Oh, 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 you, oh this whole thing? Oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you ain't never seen a Red Sox jersey like this. You know That's what I mean? official? Like, you know what I mean? Is this official? You see the stitching, my nigga? It got the... All you know right. I mean? Boop! You know what I'm saying? It got the... You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Say it loud on there. You it know, looks good. Um, my I brother's like keeper. My brother's keeper had us out there. Me and Cash was out there with our women. Um, and, uh, you know what I mean? They gave us some merch, and I liked it. It was amazing. Um, and to me, no bullshit, all jokes aside, I just thought it was amazing that there was a Juneteenth event. Fenway Park. It was. There was a June. There was a Juneteenth event at Fenway Park. How was that? Because I it was know. amazing. Like the DJs was like, like so they had like the uh, the five twenty one lounge or whatever. Like it's like a new section of of Fenway Park. Mm-hmm. It's like a little uh, you know like event space or whatever. And they had free food, free beer. If you want a hard liquor, you had to, you had to you had to pay for it. The hard liquor. Um, but you know, free beer. Like I'm drinking beer. You know what I'm saying? Of course. Uh, but do they typically have free food? Um, not. No, hell no. Do you but, think they did that because it's for black people? No, it's it was an invite thing. So you had to have tickets that were attached to that event. And I mean, there was black people there, right? But what, this is what I'm saying, though. The Red Sox organization has a lot of black people who work for them. Okay. And I think that's why representation was on par. Because you, you you look at you know the Celtics, you look at the Pats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a trinkle a little black, but it ain't it ain't bliggity black black <laughs> like the Red Sox is right now. You know what I mean? So shout out to the Red Sox organization for having us over there. Shout out to my brother's keeper for hooking up me and Cash uh, with with them tickets. Um, shout out for the merch. Shout out, you know what I'm saying? 
just the vibe. Like, I didn't even look at the score the whole time. I didn't even go there for the game. Like, I don't give a fuck about baseball. You just went there to be there. I don't give a fuck about baseball. And look cute. You know what I'm saying? I was in there with my free shit, you heard? <laughs> you know I mean? Getting lit. You know what I mean? And it was Father's Day. So I, I left there. I went to a, a Father's Day event my sister had. And um, I'm going to share something with y'all right now, man. I don't really be talking about my personal life like that. But my father is fighting cancer. Um, and Father's Day resonated with me because, you know, we threw the man a barbecue. And because of his condition, he couldn't even make it. So keep my father in your prayers, man. Papa Machine, yeah. man. Uh, yeah. You know, keep him in your prayers. Um, and, you know, that that's the reality right now. Um, and, you know, that's that's what we're going through right now. But I, I love my tribe. I love my people. And this was like a really... Um, I I open in week for me, you know what I'm yeah. saying, um, and things of that nature. So yeah. Um, but yeah, man. I mean, on a lighter note, <laughs> you know what I mean. I got my sister in the building. I got her yeah. all fucked up and shit. You yeah. Know what I mean? um, but you guys, you naturally. have a great support system, though. You know, many blessings and and support and love for you and your family during this time. Thank you, thank you. Um, but let's get into these red cups and ratings, man. Yes, let's do it. Because I don't have much else to talk about, but Red Cups and ratings, man. Uh, this week, we have two albums, man. Um, the first one, we're going we gonna, to we gonna talk about somebody who's been doing his thing for a minute in the scene, man. Shout out to my man Primo, Primo Prophet. Mm. And he had uh, all produced by Michael Angelo. So it was Primo Prophet and Michael Angelo, man. It's Toro por la Plata. That means okay. all for the money. You know what I'm saying? Why have you been teaching you that Spanish, huh? Yeah, I mean, I've been around Dominicans for a while. Yeah, that shit rolled you know off I mean? your tongue with ease. <laughs> Toro por la plata, right? Uh, Primo Profit. This was a seven-track EP. It's about 16 minutes long, man. Chanel, what you think? I think it was. It, it, it was. It was what? I don't even know. I'm still trying to digest it. I mean, one thing I got from it is, like, one thing I know about Spanish niggas and street niggas and hood niggas is they love selling their drugs. So, <laughs> the vibe. This come is on art. Now. This is art. Whatever. We gonna keep it real. And I think if the motive was, <laughs> if the motive was to rap about selling drugs, I think he sold that really well. That oh, yeah. I just, you know, I definitely he got a high from shit. listening to it. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was pretty good. One thing I'm confused about. I want to know that Toto por la plata. However you pronounce it, it was 48 seconds long, and I want to know why. I feel like I think it was the third track that should have been in the mix of one of his songs because you just mean like that 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 nuanced beat that I, he had in the I middle. I still don't understand. It wasn't a skit. It wasn't a. Essentially, it was. You know what I mean? Is it labeled as a skit? Well, no, but I think but but there's a lot of skits that are tracks right on people's projects, right? And Nothing I'll, was really said though. You don't have to, right? And that's 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 art, right? So it's that's like, that's different for me. I've never. I mean, nah, like there's that. a lot of projects like that. Like, think about it. Uh, think about Watch the Throne with Kanye West. Like, and then and, and Jay-Z, that boom, 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 boom. That's that was like, considered a skit. That well, that was just an attachment to records. I'm you know not I'm used saying? to that. Um, so that I guess it would be off. a skit, right? And then there was like a whole three-minute pause on that whole album. You know That's what I'm annoying as fuck. It was crazy. But then like, the <laughs> song that came after, it was fire. But anyway, back to Toro Pora Plata. Uh, Anything else you want to say about it? No, I think it, it was pretty good. Um, I feel like when it comes to cadence, you know, you got to really know how to ride a beat. And if you like want to make a really good song, you kind of got to be not. Uh, ooh, what's the word I'm looking for? Your flow just can't be so consistent. It got to kind of stand out. And I think mm -hmm. all of that was like too in sync, the rhythm, the cadence, the beat. That I kind of, it, it just was a lot of consistency. I would have mm. preferred to hear a little more variety. Okay. But I enjoyed it for the most part. Yeah. I like his sound. His voice is different. Yeah, Primo been doing his thing for a minute. Like, yeah. So I'm, I'm very familiar with his music. I'm familiar with his sound. Um, and I think when you're not familiar to somebody who has the same sound for the last 10 years, you kind of like, all right. You know what I mean? But like, he's been doing Do something his thing for else, a minute. Right, yeah. Um it's exactly what I expected. Right? Okay. Like when I heard this joint, um, I love Charge Three, Charge to the Game with, with Feed the Family, Body Rock, Dun oh, yeah. Daily, Shake Hanif. That's my favorite. Um, you know, can't ever go wrong with Feed the Family. Yeah, I mean, Wishful Thinking was fire. Forbidden Fruit was fire. I mean, for me, it's 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 a primo profit 
project. For, so for me, I I, I kind of knew mm -hmm. what I was stepping into when I was listening to it. So it's exactly what I expected. I thought it was That's good it. from start to finish. I love this that. is a this is a project that I would play just riding around doing what I got to do. This is type, this my would. type of music. That's right? definitely your vibe. Yeah, you know I mean, so what we give it on a whole out of five red cups. We gave Toro por la Plata by Primo Profit four out of five red cups, man. And that means Toro por la Plata. That means all for the money, man. So mm -hmm. in case, you know, niggas that didn't take, you know what I mean? Spanish and shit. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> all right. Next project. Uh, next project. This one surprised the shit out of me. Not really as far as the sound goes, but as far as just the flow of the project right mm -hmm. like it, it kept me engaged it was short records there were long records yeah. it was like it was great man so shout out my man etel man etel million dollar notebook I'm glad you said that because i've been saying etel well I that's how it's spelled what it i want to know but it, it's the but it's etel right okay. right i liked it it, it yeah. was it was like that boom bap old school vibe like the ghost face killer we were yeah. talking about rock yeah. him it was definitely feel good music i love the storytelling yeah great um, storytelling when artists use like samples in the beginning and they talk about some deep shit you know it's just it's just gonna be a great project so right. I, I like how it started um it was enjoyable it made me feel like i was a kid again yeah I like that. He, he took you back in time, man. Definitely did. The lyricism was like, whoa. Yeah. I definitely had a lot of cash moments where I'm yeah. like, how the fuck you spell that? Right, 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 um, right. right. <laughs> but it was good. Yeah. It was good. I think he displayed his intelligence. You yeah. know what I mean? There's not a lot of rappers who, who, who like showing how smart they are. Right. I think a lot of times we get wrapped up in being ignorant and lit, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? That's a good way to put it. Uh, uh, what would the nigga say? Uh, cheated on my bitch and I would never tell her sorry. <laughs> Future's 39, okay? So, like, yeah. that shit, like... Learn how to apologize, yeah, grow nigga. Up, right? Pretty much, but, yeah. But this nigga right here, <laughs> you know, he was he was displaying his intelligence, like, unapologetically. Yeah. And, and, and he took you into his world. Like, what I liked about it was just, like... He was saying real shit, like just real shit. Like, like what was that shit? Uh, the AM anxiety when he was like, uh, "Oh, I like that." He I said, like "Ain't that. this?" And when he was talking about his wife, "Ain't yeah, this something around house looking like a ragamuffin?" Like rag you go out looking good for y'all, dressed for your up for your work husband. I loved it. And he's like, "Nah, I'm bugging." Right? I love these it. are the conversations. But that's real be though. With themselves. That's like, real. What the fuck you going looking this good? Because you know I know I, mean? I be home fucking walking around in the bonnet. Y'all need right. to see me. I'm a one. So. I, I feel him. I think he's gonna piss a lot of ladies off with that. Line. Um, and also just like, <laughs> just just you know taking niggas back to like you know a Saturday morning. Mm. Uh, you know, storytelling like was one. on fire. Like I talking like about one. you know eleven o'clock when X Men come on and yeah. shit like that. This is shit that I'm like, damn nigga, he's right, nigga. Like yeah. this is all like shit that I walked through and I experienced. So I loved it a lot, man. Um, you know the the beat selection was very. 90s right it was very it was. 90s very boom it bap was. very um but i'll tell you this much his voice is very similar to my nigga ghostface man it is it is and even like the skit that he had with his man back in time before the rap delorean record mm -hmm. and i love rap delorean by the way and i'm like dog like this just reminded me of a ghostface record and i love ghostface so like i just i was engaged from start to finish 14 tracks about 34 minutes um out of five red cups man we gave my man etel million dollar notebook a 3.9 out of five man shout out to etel bro like no bullshit i'm not gonna front somebody that i work with put me on him a little while ago and um i wasn't really that impressed right well, really with what she told me about right like okay. she showed me a record and i was like all right whatever it's cool it's whatever right because nah, it doesn't move me right but <laughs> But hearing the whole project, like, I definitely, I'm, I'm tapped in, bro. So when, whenever you drop it, man, you know, you let us know, man. Um, we're going to get a sit down soon, man. That'll be dope. Um, But, uh, yeah, I mean, you ready to bring in the guests? I'm ready. You sure? That's what I'm here for. We got a heavy hitter this week. I know. We got somebody who's been doing this thing for a while, man. Um, You know, somebody who... I, I some, Somebody, all, honestly, who actually was brought to my attention, too, um, by somebody I know. Mm -hmm. And 
she goes, you know what I mean? You need to get them on here before everybody else gets them on their platform. And I said to her, you know, we're not about who do, does it first. We're about who does it the best. Right? And we do it the best. Right. And um, and then the projects, the music speaks for itself. Like, I mean, like, yes, he paints a real great picture of the hood. Um, you know, he's going through a rebranding as well mm -hmm. from, you know, who he used to be to who he is now. Um, you know, we did a red cups and ratings on him as well. And I, I fully wholeheartedly enjoyed the music. So it was just a matter of time till we had him up here, man. So I need anybody and everybody to put your hands together, give your undivided attention to my man, Iman Lay Ali. What's good, baby? <laughs> He's nice with the intros, right? What's like good, he boy? Make you, like, nah. you know you somebody, but you feel like somebody, somebody. Oh, right, right. <laughs> nah, you in the building, man. Nah, I'm happy to be here. Man. I'm glad, bro. I'm glad, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm amongst good energy. I'm, I'm just productive. I'm working, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's all that matters, man. That's all that matters, man. Um, Real quick, for the people who don't know who you are, man, give us a quick rundown of who you are, what you do, what you represent. All right, so... Um, as you know, as as mentioned, um, I'm Iman Lee Ali, formerly known as Jay Burner. I, um, I was born and raised in the right about the Dorchester Mattapan line, right off of Morgan Street. Yeah, you know, but so it's like my hood was more in Dorchester, but we hung across the street in Mattapan. Right, and um, so you know, I rep the pen to the fullest, man. And um, you know, I I, I got it's, it's kind of a similar journey to to what a lot of people experience in the neighborhood. I just um. I just use my voice differently. Mm. You know. I like that, man. I like that. Mm -hmm. Um I, I definitely wanna dive straight into your story. Okay. Like as far as like when did you get like started in music, man? Like when when what was that a thing for you? Um I say like well creative writing, creative expression. Like I grew up in a system. I grew up like the group homes to the DYS to the wow. local jails to the federal jails to the mm. state jail I did all of that shit mm. and like there's no space in there for you to have like emotional vulnerability which is a necessity for like every human survival being. yeah right so like that that was my space like I got to do it in the notebook you know mm. what I'm saying and I I kind of just started just fucking around like just on some like poem type shit, free writing type shit. And then um I like got into a battle with this dude and it kinda like Who? Huh? <laughs> Who you battle? <laughs> Alright, so <laughs> so I'm in the feds. I'm in um I'm in Virginia and it's like the jail holds about like twenty five hundred people. Okay. Um. So and it's like the projects. They just give you a, a bag with a bed, with like a, your blankets and your sheets, and mm. then like I you in that building. Okay. Mm. And it's like welcome to the big leagues. Wow. Right. So, so I'll, there's I'll, no way that could have been a max. It had to be a low. Huh? Mid was it mid? Man, low. Nah, it was. A, it was. That it was. was max? Yeah. Really. So, um, wow, you got metal detectors. <laughs> but, wow. but other than that, it's That's just your... like. Sounds ridiculous. It's like, <laughs> it's, yo, made him, yeah, yeah, the respect runs the joint. Mm. Me, me, like, you got to be a man. So I, I step on the block, you know, I, I meet some some niggas my age and shit, and niggas like, yo, what you do? I, I rap and shit. So I'm rapping. Next morning, I'm going to breakfast. It's like five in the morning. Some nigga creeps out from under the stairs like Michael Myers. He's like, Not yo, creep. mom. <laughs> hey, yo, you be rapping and shit? Don't be, don't be hiding and shit. This is mm. my shit. So he like, cut straight to the chase and kind of brought the smoke so after like a, i was just like non-confrontational like honestly i don't know how the dynamic of this shit go up here right, so right, i don't right. want to really poke my chest out just yet right right you know what i'm saying but um so i'm politely declining and then like one day the nigga started rapping like in the child hall but close and within earshot with the proximity and, yeah. and and the homies was like nah we putting the bread up you you, you gonna go see the nigga so right. We go outside, it's like about 14, 1500 people, like no lie. Um, My niggas had a whole geez, concert. Right. No, like, like Sold the, out. So when I, every dogs. inmate. When I, when, <laughs> I tell, <laughs> when I tell you no no lie, my, my word to God, like no lie. Like it was, it was me, New England, Jersey, New York, um, all the bloods, 
and the black pea stones from chicago because my celly mm. my celly was from over there and then on the other side it was washington dc mm. it was florida it was um some of virginia mm. some maryland Might as well some was on ms, MS and, 13 and, in that bitch too it was just <laughs> i ain't never seen no tense shit like that face to face in, in my life wow. and me and homie they had a basketball court it's it's outdoors it's called the pavilion and it has like an awning overhead so that no matter the season you can still hoop outdoors mm. and out they have the like the what are those the stadium seats right, all around it right. so it's a big deal when there's nice niggas that come in the homie was from vcu got books selling drugs he's in there bowling like this nice nice niggas wow. so you go outside for entertainment and you watch the games they got cameras outside you can be on a unit and tell the CEO, you'll put that channel on, watch niggas in the rec. That's know, wild. Like, like, it's that big of a deal. You That's want a wild. ticket, like niggas can bet, like, yo, right. I think Burner's going to drop 20. Right. Uh, like, you could put that. It's kind of dope. Like, I it's, never heard of no dope shit like well, that. that the feds prison. is different. The feds yeah. is different. And that sounds like a fire ass facility. Right. I give a fuck, nigga. <laughs> if you going to be locked up, nigga. If you going to be locked up anywhere in America, my nigga. Go there. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, can I request a transfer? Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, on dead dogs, nigga. <laughs> Hey, yo, you know, it's funny, though, like a testament to what you're saying, though, is like kind of nothing about that experience. Um, I did seven and a half years there. Nothing about that experience deterred me from returning. Mm. And within mm. six months, I caught another pistol case and went upstate for three years. You was too comfortable. That shit was so too late. Like, it was yeah. just like, what up? Nigga, I know how to go to jail. Like, <laughs> I was in Virginia, nigga. That shit was crazy, nigga. It was lit. Damn. <laughs> but yeah, though. So, yo, I, I battled the nigga, though. So, it's face to face. It was five judges on um, three rounds. They had a panel? Yeah. Wow. Like, nah, the, the rec officers are involved like wow it's called king of the ring wow so this dude's the he's whenever some a, a challenger comes on in the compound this they do this they assemble they have speakers outside microphone judges the, the police is there the nurses That's is crazy. there wow. the, the, the cute cafeteria bitches right, everybody's right. there that Extra the whole business. jail's outside crazy. like this yeah. wow it, homebrew which is the, it, for, right. for the, those who don't know is the jail made liquor right, right niggas right. is smoking outside like like you said, like where's the punishment? Like this right. is jail. Like that's that's that was the experience. That's so so yo, this nigga want to get so, locked up right, right now. <laughs> Lock me up. Throw away the key. <laughs> so right, yo. So excited, so, Charlie. I'm, I've never heard an experience of the feds like this. So nah, so so peak. <laughs> so um, homie, I'm the challenger, so I gotta go first, right? So now, mind you, when the nigga was spit, he was spitting in the child hall. Mm. I assume that he's from DC. I'm assuming like he rapped like Wally or some shit. I'm mm. like, it's in the bag. Like, like it's go go ass. Like, it's nigga. easy. It's <laughs> on, on everything. <laughs> right. on, I swear to God. Yo, the nigga was, he said some shit. You know it's wild when it's like 10 years later and you still remember some of the shit he was saying. But he had and, the and violin he was like, like that. He was like, yeah, you couldn't see me if you had megapixels. I got a better pistol, better hit you. So, like, and I'm nice like those ladies in the visiting room. You know, the mm. cheddar ripples. Oh. Like, And I was like, I was like, oh shit, this is like a New York nigga. Like, <laughs> right, right, so right, like, right. I immediately exited out the child hall before a crowd started to yeah, yeah. and I had to get up out of there. And like, now we're going to do this in front of the panel the right, right way. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? It's like a smart marketing. But, this nigga, this nigga, this nigga. <laughs> yo, but, but I knew like, oh, I would have probably, got, nigga would have probably did me dirty. He would have did me filthy. Right. I would have went out there bullshitting. So I knew I had to be a little innovative. I'm, he, I'm not as disrespectful as that nigga because up here you can't really rap with that level of blatant disrespect. Like and now, n yeah, mm -hmm. now that with the, the battling culture is a little that. different now. It's kind of more tolerated. But like right. ten years ago, like in the like yeah, nah nah, yeah. we ain't like suck my dick and fuck your mom and all that. Right, like right, nah, right. so but he is. And my mom's a very nice lady. So <laughs> so so, so, <laughs> so round one, I come outside. I'm like yo, I'm an eight mile nigga. I come outside with my paperwork. Right, so my bars really wasn't all super hard, but I was just like, um, I said Jesus couldn't protect your fate, and I'm expecting hate. So before you spit, burner gonna set the record straight. I ain't a snitch. Start asking around. Matter of fact, they go to paperwork, pass it around. Uh, so then I stopped, and it was more right. like, it was more like theatrical. It was more like it wasn't crazy lyrical, but it was like I'm here. It set a tone. Right, mm -hmm. right, but. 
as cute as that shit was, the shit he came back with, he annihilated. Me. Oh, he was, damn. I'll hold your mother hostage and feed him my summer sausage. Oh, he, I'll oh, smack you off and send you back to Boston in a platinum coffin. Oh, oh shit. Like, when I say, oh. like, the nigga's raw, he said, I get you buried in, he said, hey, what do you say? I get you buried in a strapless gown. Oh, Some damn. shit. This nigga remembered the shit. Yo, this like, now, I've you, never man. tolerated this <laughs> level of disrespect without an altercation in my life. Like, just, just like he's foaming at the mouth in front of me, and I'm just like, oh shit. I got cranked this shit up. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, I, I, the next two rounds, I just kind of, I got, I've never disrespected somebody like that, and I fought him ever. Like, like I violated him, and just, right. I can't even kind of repeat some of that due to the, um, like the, the the rise in recognition of certain communities, and it would be kind of borderline disrespectful. Wow! wow. But I violated him wow. in a way that was undeniable, wow. and that was kind of like that. What's that his lit- ethnicity? Um, nah, he's a black man he's from black, DC. Uh, black man. Mm-hmm. He was hoping for him to be a Saxon, right? right? If he was not, nah, I mean, obviously, then nah, I didn't think he was Saxon. <laughs> it's he possible. He could have been Asian. He could have been Hispanic. He could have been, you know, what I mean, whatever nigga Rican. Who knows? You know what I'm saying we don't know, right? But but that's that's a crazy experience, my nigga. Mm-hmm. And what year was that? Oh, what was that? That was about what was that? Two thousand and fourteen. Wow. Thirteen. Okay. Like that. About ten years ago. So you said you got out from that situation and yeah. you went right back in six months later. So, yeah, I came home. Um, I I got in the, I got into the music shit. I did um. I did tracks with Chief Keith, French Montana. Like I was really oh, on fire. Talk that shit, second. man. Talk All about right. it. Nah, I mean, I did it. I don't rest my like I don't rest on my past laurels. So like like honestly, it's so irrelevant to today. There's people that did shit yesterday, the yesterday before me, better right. than my yesterday mm-hmm. that are nowhere now, right. and they're just speaking on the shit that they did yesterday. Like right. they riding that yeah. shit. And um, to be quite honest, like coming home doing. So almost seven and a half years and then I was just getting to the bread and putting it in the features the city didn't really respect that approach at that like, time like oh you just come out and you're doing features like oh big whoop you got a song with this person it's right. like like I think the city rec- they they are they appreciate the grind mm-hmm. they like seeing the seeing progress. type of ascension yeah. some type of you know rise fall rise again they, they like to see that they right. like, I think it adds to the authenticity of the artist so um, yeah I, I got jammed up with a with another pistol like seven months being home mm. and i'll end up going upstate for three years okay so you're using the max now nah, I, I went to um concord okay okay mm. all right mm. well shit man i mean so free the guys though free all the real free niggas you know for real keep the rats and the rapists and free the rest oh <laughs> say that <Amen>. again <laughs> let the church say amen <laughs> So how'd you go from Burna to Iman Le Ali? Like, is that Muslim or um, like, how nah, did that so, come about? Is that a nickname? So, I mean, you know, Burna, Burna's just all that, all that hood shit, all that, all that shit y'all seen in the movies and hear niggas rap about. Like, I was, I was really on that. I was really about that. It's, it's not no type of glorification because I don't, I don't see it. It only hinders my progression. Mm. Um, and I tell shit more like a cautionary tale as, a, as opposed to like bragging and boasting about shit. Mm. And I feel like people in my position should kind of do that more often. Like, um, so Iman Lay is my middle name. Okay. Um, what does that mean? Because I Googled it and I couldn't find that shit. Emmanuel so, kept so, coming up. So you know it's funny though? <laughs> it's, it's funny you say that. So it's like, I don't know what my mom's was doing. She was tweaking, <laughs> obviously. She was on whatever she was on. My pops is Hispanic. She's Jamaican, so maybe she thought she was doing something like you know, real Special. eclectic. And, that was different. But, it's but, different. So check. I, I was on. There's this. There's a. There's another artist by the name of Jay Burner, um, out of out of another state, and we were kind of having this like dispute legally over the name, and mm. due to my ina- inactivity over the three years of going back to prison, it gave him kind of the one up on the we leverage. Right, 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 yeah. Yeah. So. So rather than like rebut and go hard, I kind of came to the conclusion that like everything associated with burning, it, it, it it's not associated with ascension. It's it's this it's this cycle that I could, was perpetuating. I'm, I'm, you know, or the hood shit, or the dumb mm. shit. So I'm like, yo, 
let me look up Imanle. I'm like, zero Imanle is found. At all. Um, so I was like, dope. I was like, let me, I was like, Ali. Ali's the greatest fighter, in my opinion, who took L's. Mm. I like that. Look that up. Zero found. That's me. And that was, and since that day, that was, that was the inception. Okay. I thought it was a Muslim name. Are you Muslim? Uh, I pr so I practice Islam and I respect the structure of Islam and I I respect um I fear God, but I I encourage everyone to just get to know your God and like you don't like don't get to know the God that man is providing you mm -hmm. like get to know mm -hmm. the God inside of you get to, and and connect with with something higher than yourself because it doesn't have to be within the boundaries of something that man's telling you. Like mankind ain't never failed to to let us down whenever we've been vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't they do it in that department as well? Uh, I thought it was some jail down. shit. I thought yeah. so too. I thought it was like, <laughs> he's like you know, you went to prison, so it gives him a lot of time to uh, read law books and uh, convert to Islam, <laughs> oh, where he can learn he things like hello, Vito. hatred for the white devil. <laughs> Advanced hatred for the white devil <laughs> <laughs> and volleyball. <laughs> you stupid. No, but that's like a good topic of conversation and a good question because like your experience being in there, I'm sure you've seen a lot of people convert. Like, why do you think inmates adopt religion? Do you think it's out of fear? Protection. Um, Protection, comfortability. So for, for me, like I used to go to Juma services every Friday. I, um, I really rocked with the structure, like the fact that like since the inception of Islam, like not one word's been changed in, in the Quran. That was really intriguing to me. I'm like, that's the only thing that I know of that's like the same since it's been it, its inception. Um, the prayer structure and all of that, like it removes you from whatever situation you're in and gives you like, they, it's called taqwa, it's called, um, which is consciousness of God, right? And I, I, I fuck with these principles. I'm heavy on principles, but I, I wouldn't convert in prison because I didn't want that that like connotation attached to me that I'm converting to something that comes with legit an army behind you. They mm -hmm. don't leave no men behind. Facts. Mm -hmm. It's super militant. That's where the respect came in. But it's like I know too, like sucker homie over here could kind of play the play the religion angle just to get niggas off off his ass, and right. and, and dudes will back him up. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to be attached to that to that in itself mm. but i mean real recognized real so i linked with the, with the muslims that that was like-minded you know like shout out my man flip my man shakur like mm. got a natty he trying to come home my man just he got a natty he trying to come home like i know I, I met some men that helped like forge me and still forge is still you know mm. sharp like and that. still so that's okay. tough yeah because religion it, it's powerful and i feel like crimes that are done to get you in prison are equally powerful like you could rape a little girl or you could kill a woman that is pregnant but because you've adopted a certain religion you're protected you and that, that trumps that and that's right. kind of like that's why so to me that's right I, so i chalk it up rather than voicing my my opinion because i'm i'm in a state where i'm trying to be as like the least judgmental as possible right but i just say that like um i'm not that mature yet <laughs> Still burning. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to get into still burner, man. Okay. Because that was my, you know, introduction to you, I guess. You know what I mean? Because I heard the name Jay Burner back in the day. You know what I mean? When I when I thought I was a rapper and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um and I didn't really tap into, you know, your music then. But when when you were brought to my attention and um, your man's hit me, uh, BR hit me about Still Burner, and I'm like, yo, I right, I'm gonna check it out. Whole rebranding, so I had no idea it was Jay Burner, right? So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I, I played it, and I'm like, from the beginning, I'm like, all right, I like this energy, right? You know, heart of the city. And I'm like, all right, S sounds real Boston, you know what I mean? kept listening and i'm like i'm a whole fan bro like like dead ass bro like your ability to tell stories and um 
like you said earlier about that whole uh, battle, like you, you're theatrical with it, right? Um, you know, walk us through that creative process for Still Burner. Like, why, why, why is it Still Burner? Oh, he brought props. <laughs> oh shit! Nah, I, mean, nah, I, I don't do props. Yeah, I don't do props. So, you, so, I mean, this might get some niggas mad, but I want to just tell everybody: keep keep working your hardest. All right, just keep keep doing your best. Um, still burning. I was incarcerated for a total of about ten years out of the last like thirteen. Wow. Yeah. That's you getting this, yeah. And so what you getting is like the shit that I would my thoughts at three in the morning while I'm sitting in the cell, and my I got my MP4 player and I'm purchasing instrumentals off of random playlists and yeah. I'm writing, 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 writing. But when I come home, pick up your gun. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I come home, and, and that like, was a woman, by the way. I don't, I don't want to waste these thoughts. I don't want to waste these moments that, or what procured from these moments. So, what am I going to do with this? Just throw it away? Mm. Nah. There's times now where I feel the, oh, I'm just I feel the need to let off some type of energy some type of steam and i know like i can't handle situations and from from the mindset that i once used to approach things um i want new outcomes in life so i need to approach things differently but i still gotta be niggerish this gives me my opportunity mm -hmm. so I, I like that i dug shit. in here premium filth nigga <laughs> exactly i dug <laughs> in here saying? and and you can hear like i know you can hear like a level of it's like hunger associated with some of those songs. That's just like, nigga, that's that jail shit. That's yeah. that yard shit. Like I had to go out there and spit that in front of you know, in front of in front of the homies, and I couldn't, I couldn't fuck up. It had to be one take, and then I had to bring the energy. The confidence had to be through the roof, and it's like, so what you hearing is just, I, I've been ready for this. Like I've been ready for this. This is to hold you at bay, while I'm curating mm. who I, Iman Lee. Yeah, Permanently. who you are now. Absolutely. I like that. So you just felt like that was like a part of your life that you had to tell. Um, Yeah, like still burners, just like, you know, I, I have in this moment, in this space, you're going you gonna to get a glimpse. But I ain't going back to jail for you to know I'm still a real nigga. Mm. Right, right, right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's real, real stupid. Is real like, does. Nah, like, yeah. hey, like, niggas know. And here you go. Here's, here's, a, here's a little depiction right here. Here's a little. But, like, Whenever, whenever uh, I feel the need to, to like get a street something, it's gonna be under under the guise of of, burn, of still burning. Mm. But um, I'm moving towards this space where I'm recognizing the responsibility and the weight that like comes with having a platform. And I want, I don't want to be a professor, but I want to teach through my experience. Mm. And so, I sell honesty. I don't, I don't sell no bullshit. I don't speak no lies like when i stand i stand on that i sell honesty you ain't heard about the bentley yet because i ain't been in one i ain't even rent one yet but you will like as right. soon as i jump in it like you know what i'm saying but like i keep it so authentic and i think that partnered with my my like willingness to to have some type of emotional vulnerability partner with that right. it's gonna really throw people off because street nigga is not really allowed to to, to do that right usually that comes from drake or some shit like <laughs> but i'm not gonna cry i'm not going but i'm you gonna feel me though. right you know um, x used to move me like that so it's like i don't know if you took x and you took j cole a little bit but he grew up in the pen yo you know yeah like, that's, that might be what you're working with when you hear my shit. Not 2014 Forest Hills Drive. Oh, my God. Well, talking about, like, rapping your truth, you said um, what you, in the single that you dropped in May, Gothic Massacre, which I really enjoyed. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah. All of them, you uh, went there. I, I liked it a I lot. I produced that, by the way. I made that beat. Oh, that was really good. That was okay. really good. Um, you said I done took this nigga chain. It was fake out here. Have you ever had a situation like that personally? Or like know someone that 
like try to get a come up took a nigga chain realized it was fake because i just want to know like what what'd you do with the chain like did you give it back did you pawn it what i just want to know i mean in recent memory i i don't recall like you know ever ever doing anything of the sort but i've i've heard of instances <laughs> where people like I like you know yeah they 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 seek opportunity however they seek opportunity and sometimes they it, it's fool's gold and you know and when you when you do go and you, you pawn it in and they tell you that it's not what you think it is, I mean, you, you, it makes you kind of reflect a little, and you, you might want to seek a new profession. You know? mm. but, do you keep it for the sake of bragging rights, though? Um, I mean, I'm from a lifestyle don't, that don't really involve bragging rights. That's kind of this new shit. Like, I ain't trying to go to jail. So like, um, mm. Mm. Okay. I like that. Good answer. Very, very good. Back to jail, though. Like, let's talk about. Back to jail. No. <laughs> Not literally, though. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for anyone. <laughs> don't do that. Do not do that. <laughs> don't go there. Don't twist my words like that. <laughs> Fucking asshole. When like, do you plan on going back? <laughs> the jail you talk about sound lit. Oh, but um, let's talk about sex after prison. Wow. Um, come on now. <laughs> Everybody know it's a topic I love to talk about. Sex after prison, though. Did you have to like re-educate yourself about sex, or like who educated you about sex? Because you were in prison with these men that have done crazy crimes. I'm sure they were pedophiles. And perception is key because, you know, pedophiles, they get aroused off of seeing little kids in bathing suits. So does that play a part on your mind? And then when you're back out in the free world, do you have to kind of think about things a little? Not have to, but you think about things a little differently. Not calling you a pedophile, uh, but no, you, you get what I'm a, saying? No, you said a lot. And, and I'm just... <laughs> I'm glad that I intellectually have the, be, the ability to like process what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, that's like all of it. All right, we're gonna like compartmentalize and separate some of this stuff. I'm gonna separate my sexual desire from the pedophilia. Very yes, and, and first, very much. We'll, so. we'll address the pedophilia. I was in an institution that when I first got there, it was like it was it was it was hood shit. It was cell phones. It was weed. It was this and that. Then they introduced like. After a few years, this this sex offender program, mm -hmm. and when the sex offenders came in, a new law went into effect that if we approach you for your paperwork and and like press you, like that's what we normally do. Like when you come in the building, we need to see your paperwork. Yo, you got thirty days, or you gotta get the fuck out of here. Oh wow! And but now they're protected. The law says if you if you press them, they can prosecute you. Really? And up, you can receive up to a year. Then I believe the statute went up to five years or something oh, like that. Oh, shit. So now it's Not like it. you're scared to even run down on a pedophile and get, kick him out the jail because it, you'll go home later to your family. Wow. So now they kind of establish dominance. And now we watching, like, you walking by to the library and it's a class full of fucking 60 dudes in there and they all try. You know what they in there for and you can't even do nothing about it. That's wild. Right? So you that was around. So, so <laughs> Right. Right. So Pete, though, right? So it's funny. It's funny, though, that the, this, the universe works mysteriously because, like, you bring, you bring that up. So at that time, Mary J. Bly and... Ludacris came out with a song called Runaway. Yeah. Mm. And and he was like, he was touching up on like some of these type of issues, right? And I felt like I, I respected the the uh their attempts mm. to to like bring this to light, this issue. But I felt like it was very bubblegummy. Mm. Runaway now. Yeah, like, like, yes, it was. And so very commercial. I literally wrote a song at that moment. The song's called Renee. And it was inspired by those people that mm. moved in in that program and the lack of in this song. And also, I felt the need with this project PTSD that I'm about to release. Okay. Oh, um, you know, we slide that in there. Yeah, Post traumatic <laughs> streets disorder. Okay. I, I'm addressing things that um that I feel like. 
like these are issues that go on in every community, but our, our community specifically, the urban community, we feel the, the necessity to sweep shit under the rug mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, just like stay away from people. Then after a few like family gatherings and a few drinks, like we act like we forgot it happened until the mm. next blow up. And it's like, that's just so detrimental to our development as like a, a culture. Like, like I, I just recognize it and I'm anti, you know? Facts, so, nigga. Um, back to this. So, back to the sexuality though all right so coming home like I, I i went in a shorty i had a lot to learn um and i did have a like somebody like my older brother he told me like the best thing you could do in regards to a female is like you you have to listen to a body mm. don't listen to nothing coming out her mouth don't listen to no sounds like you have to listen to a body you have to study you have to be attentive mm. like like you know the body reacts in certain ways from yeah. goosebumps to hit to hair sticking up to the chest rising to there's just plenty of cues if you listen to the body that that will yeah. give you every everything you kind of need to know right and um outside of that realm don't don't be shy or hesitant to like communicate like communications like everything like because you might discover like you everything you want you, your, your partner might possess that in instant. Like, you might get a bonus out of the deal. Or you might, like, realize, oh, shit, I'm about to waste my time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know. I think communication should be, like, right next to that that sexuality. Just nice. like Shorty should be kind of letting home know out the joint, too, if he ain't doing something right. Like, you just jack my nigga. I know you yeah. was doing a thousand push-ups. <laughs> Daga, you know Daga, that, but Daga, like, Daga. You know? He ne, he ne, he ne, he ne, he ne. You know, already yeah. niggas staggering on that check, you know? Like, <laughs> like, so it's like, yeah, like, I'm almost like, I mean, with wisdom come experience, you know, practice safe sex to everybody out there. Oh, but, uh, but, but I mean, just, just listen to your partner's body, yo. Listen, listen to a body, fellas. Like, cause it be talking. Is that what you was getting at with that? It, it came full circle. Okay. He understood the assignment. Yeah, uh, cause I, I I didn't know where the fuck you were going with that. Look, you, know what I'm saying? you right. gotta be able to. It, it's an energy. He he understood. I mean, you seem very centered, very um, balanced, and very conscious now. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? For for, for what I heard, from what I heard, I'm still burning, nigga. Yeah, you know I mean, this is not the thing I expected to be sitting across from right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, what do what 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 should people expect from you moving forward? Um, I mean, I think you should expect continuous progression. Um, expect to just see me. Expect to feel my presence. Expect to expect for me to be working whenever mm -hmm. you're looking. Mm -hmm. Um, and other than that. Fuck your expectations. Like, I don't care. Like, I'm busting my ass. I'm not going back to prison. Like, I, I'm i like, like, I kind of like disassociated from everything that's, that could potentially land me back in them type of situations. Bro, man. And it's like, moving forward, it's just, it's all about growth. Yeah. So, I'm full. Like, I got the blinders on. I see you, uh, you was hanging out with the Hawks the other day, man. The Hawkies. Shout out my man Last Days, man. Shout out, shout out my man Dirt, man. Shout out to Hawks Nest, man. If y'all need a studio to go record some music, man, fuck with them boys over there at the Hawks Nest, man. They, they, I mean, they, they know what the fuck they doing over there, man. If you're looking for an industry sound, a clean sound, they gonna hook you up, man. So, is that is that something that we should be expecting? Something like as far as collaborations? Um, so first and foremost, like I ain't, I ain't really big on collaborations with um with people who I don't with all due respect who I don't feel is like a great representation of like what I stand for mm. um I, that's real so with the homie like I think overall his packaging I think he's a good look for the city absolutely anytime he steps out he's a great representation absolutely. of what of what black Boston look like absolutely mm. um but furthermore like in person like like kind of like when the cameras is off mm. the, the nigga saw it yeah like nigga ain't let, it's it, it was never no big eyes no little use it was like safety first and foremost all right let's rock out let's go so it's like i, I respect that i like them priorities in that order like and and like nah he's 
he nah, I, I got nothing but good shit to say about the homie. Yeah, I mean, you know, Lass is one of our favorite people. Um, I was talking to Cash earlier, and I said, look, you know, w- when we talk to artists up here, man, like, it, it, it has to be, um, you know, great energy, and it has to, like, be people who are ready to actually tell their story, right? Mm. And I'm like, yeah. we literally could talk to Last Days every fucking episode <laughs> for the rest of our career, and yeah. it would be great. It would. Right? But not everybody's last days and not everybody represents the scene the way he does right so the fact that you know you guys are um you know within good company man i love to shoot see shit, see shit like that man because mm-hmm. it just gets me excited because i know what he brings to the table i know what you bring to the table man so it just makes me feel like boston's in good hands you know what right. i'm saying um so let's talk about uh ptsd uh post-traumatic street disorder right that's what you said Mm-hmm. Um, how, how soon are we looking to release that? I right, so for for PTSD, we're gonna first of all, I want to let you, let the people know that the, it's gonna be multiple installments of this. Okay. So um, you can expect more music coming from this this artery, this vein. Okay. Um, but we're going for July release. All right. Um, still burning two coming up as well in August. Like it's it's about to come. It's, it's about to just go crazy. We going dumb. But um. Mm. We just we covering topics that are like I said the topics that I feel like get swept under the rug. So I got the track on um, I mentioned earlier the Renee track. I have a song called um Power, which is a it's a homage track to Nas's I Gave You Power, which he tells a story from the perspective of a firearm. Right, right? he's right, the burner. Right now I told the the story from the perspective of a bullet. Mm. Right, so. So, but that on, so I tell that story. Um, what else I got on there? Why we don't fall in love is gonna be the lead single. Okay. Um, you know, it, it's kind of getting, it's getting spins. You know, shout out to two times he he got he got it in rotation. Hey, Marie. Dex. Yeah. Uh-huh. And um, you know, my guy E Double, he been showing love too. He been shout out E Double, man. Yeah. yeah. So, we, just, we just working, but um, I'm covering different topics that. Like, you know them hard-to-have conversations? Yeah. Like, I'm having them on the record. I like that. And, um, but that's how I'm approaching it. And um, like I said, every time I, I come from the soul and every time I come from experience, it's going to kind of be under the guise of PTSD until I'm ready, I feel like, to release like a, a project project, like, a, like an album. So right now, I'm just trying to establish the consistency. I truly believe with utmost confidence that, like, Nobody can do what I do lyrically around here. Like, period. Like, niggas can't fuck with me on that level. I agree. It's not about that, though. Because it's people who, not necessarily their work ethic, but their level of consistency, mm. that rate is higher than mine. Yes. Mm. Therefore, their visibility is higher than mine. Right. And not to mention you have people that have, like, the certain benefits of just the demographics they belong in. It might be more of an error associated with social media where I'm more from an era of like keeping it quiet. Right. And like, so it's like we move different and I'm, I'm finding like, I got to figure out how to maneuver. It's not an excuse. Like nobody's giving me no excuses. So I'm just figuring it out. But I know in the meantime, I got to get that level of consistency up to par with basically everybody like, like the, the main names you hear in out here. Right. Mm-hmm. I like that. Any of those topics on PTSD you want to talk about now to enlighten someone or just to have a, a vulnerable or transparent conversation about, or do we have to wait till we hit the album? Oh, uh, I mean, we could. I talk. I talk about why we don't fall in love a little bit since that's the least single. Um, and kind of like it's self-explanatory, right? And that's the spinoff of A Marie's. Um, you you remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, so. So I, I, you know, I got the beat kind of redone over it and more up tempo, so that you can kind of move to it. But the minute you listen, like especially the females, I'm like, wait, this ain't for us. Like, fuck, this nigga's talking <laughs> shit, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but it's really reflective at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like we don't fall in love no more because we ain't lovable. Just because mm-hmm. you're desirable, don't mean that they gonna fuck with you. Mm-hmm. So it's like, like, yeah, you're desirable, but they still ain't gonna fuck with you. Like the tension span today is like, you really got a question? Is it like, away. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's like, and I feel like who's really having that conversation? Like, 
I like that. Like, shout out to Cole, shout out to Kendrick. I of think course. they do it. Um, but like I said, I feel like I'm a, like th- those is Black Kings. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit deeper in the trenches mm-hmm. than that. So I feel like my shit's a little bit edgier, but it's still of the same like vein. What makes like a person or a woman per se lovable, like to you? Because everybody mm-hmm. has their own definition, of course. All right. So, what makes a woman lovable? Good question. Um, what makes a woman lovable to me? I, I, I want. I would like to base. She has to be relatable first and foremost. Yeah. We have to be able to speak the same like love language, like like not even speaking, like just comfortability in in moments that aren't d- dictated by speech like mm-hmm. we can lead with with our auras and with our energies um i like i like women that's i know it's kind of cliche to say about about their business right a level of independence or whatnot but like that balance of like being able to to honor what's really important not necessarily just working but then also have a side of you that's like willing to have a threshold for some of my shit. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like, right. like, don't be a hard ass, but, but don't let me push you over as well. Obviously, right? And that's kind of what everybody. Kind of like submission about. to a certain degree. I mean, I feel like that term is kind of like thrown around loose. It is. Um, it's, it's it's an overused word. Yeah. Absolutely, days, right? Like. Well, this woman can submit and you know whatever blah, blah, blah. I mean, right. motherfuckers, <laughs> motherfuckers learn a new word and they just throw that shit around they, yeah, like, it's do. crazy they, bro they like it's ridiculous and that's mm-hmm. that's the word of the fucking year right now it submission is. submission it though it, it, it's gonna vary from person to person I feel right. like just to make making a commitment to to a person like a, so, a solid one person mm-hmm. that that to to an extent is is that isn't it right right Cause you gotta submit to your woman too. It's like, not you know submission. Like, yeah. It's not. Like, you, you know, it, it's you're it's, submitting to that commitment. Right. Everybody has to meet their person in the middle. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter what that middle looks like. Cause my middle is gonna look from different from yours. Different right. from yours. Exactly. Or, your or, definition of submission is completely different from, from mine, and that's perfectly fine. And it don't. Who the fuck cares? Right. Mm-hmm. Who cares. I got people. It only needs to make sense to the to people involved in this involved union. With, that's yeah. it. Straight like that. There's people who don't understand my relationship. They don't need to. Right? Yeah, I don't know how I don't Amy understand. deals with you at all. Me I, neither. I they go on dead dogs. <laughs> so, God bless Amy. Right? <laughs> She's the right? goat. Uh, <laughs> you know, and there's other people where I'd be like, that's not for me to understand, right? That's right. It works for them, whatever shit, you know, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think when when you're a creator too, when you're when you're creative, like. Um, having somebody who is okay with that that like really puts the battery in your back to keep creating and understands what comes with it mm-hmm. on a ground level is so like not all women is patient enough no you know what right. i mean for shit like that because because niggas ain't even patient with themselves yeah you know what i mean niggas give up on their shit all the fucking time my nigga a woman probably gave up on them well before they did right <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like this fucking nigga, 35 rapping <laughs> shit. Like nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like UPS is hiring. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, but I wanted to go back to Still Burner because Corey story, <laughs> nigga. I didn't hear that one. Corey story was so heavy. Like, what inspired that record? Um, uh, that was just my my imagination. How do I say it? Maybe if if something could have went the way I had wanted it to go down, mm. but it didn't, and I was in prison. Mm. And I was like, if if it would have went down, it would have went down like this. But it didn't, so it just. Oh my you know? God, nigga, like. I'm I'm pretty sure the nigga's name wasn't Corey. Oh, absolutely not. But, no, um, it's from a completely imaginative. Right, 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 right. Yeah, but um, <laughs> the, 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 the <laughs> fuck, I heard this shit and I'm like, nah, right? I'm in the car, like I'm at the liquor store. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, 
Yeah, you know I mean, I'm in the car. I put my AirPods in. I walk in the liquor store. I grab the bottle, and I'm just like, nigga, like, am I hearing what I think I'm hearing? Like, and I'm like, nah, this can't be a true story, nigga. <laughs> right? There's Run no this statue shit back, of limitations right? on stories like right, that. So right, right. You'll and, never get those stories. And I'm like, so that's like. For you to come up with a, a a record like that, like you know, you know, second to last joint on 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 still burner, um, that was what was like, I right, this 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 is the guy, you know what I mean? Like for me, I was like, I I, I love this story, um, you know, there was other records that I loved a lot too, but that was the standout, and 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 I think storytelling is 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 kind of like a a lost art. You know what I mean? Yeah, and rap, yeah. like a lot of niggas don't do that shit. Like you, we, you got to tap into the older artists for that. A right. lot of the times, right? We had King Vaughn. He told the same story like eighteen times. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> R.I.P. to that man. <laughs> but at the same time, like that storytelling, like like culture, I love that it's still alive in hip hop, man. Mm-hmm. And, and and I commend you for that, man, because um, you know you're you're doing something that. A lot of niggas won't do because they know that that's not what industry is, right? You know, you you might have Drake to tell a story like, you know. And I ain't gonna hold you, it requires effort. Like, that's not the verse that you come up with with 15 minutes. Right. And, you know, so niggas ain't really trying to work harder, they trying to work smarter. Right, right. And I I love that you, you, you know, it shows transparency in your music. Where it's just like, this is what I'm feeling at the moment. This is what we need to do. And this is what I'm going to put out to the world. Uh, so so that's amazing for me. Um, also, more about Still Burner. How do you feel about our rating? Um, First of all, thank you. Like, You're welcome. Like, like, I appreciated it. Um, it was indicative of, like, yo, you going the right way. Like, keep going, keep going. Keep or, going. Like, yeah, it always feels good to, like, Get genuine feedback first, word. and then when it's good, it's like, oh shit, like, yeah. word, like, like yeah. yeah, nah, I humbly like accept it, like, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, you was basically a five. <laughs> it was a four point seven. Remember, yeah, was that, 4. Yeah, 7. I remember. It was I mean, pretty yeah. close. Getting away, yeah, yeah, yeah. you be rounding shit out. Like, it was a five. Uh, was just give him a five I mean, then. Well, but it wasn't a five, right? <laughs> so it's like you know you gotta. And that's the thing, right? So we like like we were just talking about earlier, it's lyricism, uh, production, engineering, authenticity, cohesiveness, right? Um so could have fell under the, the lines of another category that probably had nothing completely to do with. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we judge on. It's three of us judging. We average all of our scores. That's a pretty fucking high score. Yeah. It's very seldom that you see a five, mm-hmm. right? Um, so, with that being said, um, what's next? Yeah, that's a high standard. Um, so, but what I feel where my where my confidence comes from in this is knowing that I'm giving y'all thoughts from 10 years ago and you think this highly of it. Mm. Right. You don't even know what the fuck I'm coming up with right now. Like you don't even know the evolution of these right. thoughts. Like, and that's why I'm excited. And, and that's that's like that's what's exciting me. Like, yeah. oh shit. Like Cause when I hit you, you was like, yeah. nigga, that's some old shit. And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> that's some old shit. You know what I mean? So that that excites me. Like, you know what I mean? As as a hip hop head. You know what I mean? Like I just you know, this is why we do what we do. Um mm-hmm. and that that's exciting to see, you know, what's gonna come into fruition as well. Um Chanel, we, we, we got, I know you got more questions, right? No, no, no. I was no? letting you rock. I, I, I just, I'm going off of the energy and enjoying the conversation. I, you know, I hate when you do that shit. Nah, because I, I, I like, I like the load. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You know, if I bah, look, I told you, you got to meet me again. Bah, if I want to be tagged in, I'm gonna on. say tag bah, me in. I am on it. My fault. My bad. You see, I, I'm gonna catch the ball. My fault. My fault, man. But anything you want to talk about, bro, that you want to come up here and get off your chest, man, because you know, I don't know how often you do interviews, um, but. You know, this is an open forum, man. Anything you want to come up in and, and holler about? I mean, um, you know, I mean, any opportunity I had to to speak, I just first of all, like, shout out to um, like my man To. He's he's releasing a project called Blinking Got Bus. Okay. Um, that's my bro. He's moving. He's moving right. Um, other than that, like, 
I'm just I'm just putting one foot in front of the other. And like I said, well, I say humbly, but I'm aggressively pursuing my dreams. Like I'm aggressively pursuing like being somebody. I'm not content with praise and pats on the back. I know I'm nice. I Word. I know I'm different. Like, and I'm just I'm just on it. Like I'm hungry. I'm on it. Like I don't know how else to say it, but um, it's all about positivity. Like I ain't about beefing with niggas no more. Like mm. niggas know what that's about. Like. All right. Like, I don't have nothing to prove to nobody no more, like, but myself, mm. you know? So, I um, and I ain't letting myself down, so we just working. I like that, man. You, you Do you have children? I'm a father figure. A father figure. I okay. keep it at that. Yeah. All right. All right. Respect. I mean, I think um, I have a, I have a network of children from some that are close, from here to here. The circles get wider and wider and wider. And I feel like my my influence amongst those circles is like is one of the key factors in like the direction that my life's heading in right now. It gives me the structure that it keeps me from doing shit to return to prison because I mm. always got to come back home. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So. Does your style of parenting match like the way you rap? Like, is it? Um, yeah, I'm. I sell honesty. I, yeah, no lies in that. Like, nah, I'm really transparent, straightforward. Um, I'm I'm understanding as well. Like, you know, and I understand that like the world that I grew up in doesn't exist today. Right. So, there ha- there's effort that's required from somebody from like a parental like like standpoint that you need to make the effort to kind of learn your kids' languages and, mm-hmm. and step into your kids' worlds. And as opposed to making them step into yours. Right. And then you like kind of hold them accountable for failing to do so. But it's like your world don't exist. To them. Right. You know? What would be the number one message you want to give to these young niggas out, man, out here that's, um, you know, glorifying a certain lifestyle? I, and I mean, I like to be completely real. It's just like the systems, this, this hood shit is designed for niggas to fail, like straight up, like just the whole idea of putting 20 30 40 50 60 people together to break the law together to then go to jail and not have support of the other members mm. like it's 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 treacherous niggas is going to fuck your girl when she when you go to when you go to jail she's going to let niggas blaze like niggas <laughs> like yo like it, it nah like like nah but then you're going to come home and try to smoke a nigga or something and it's just right. like I'm, I've watched this shit just happen and happen and over happen and, and over happen. And over. It's like, yo, like, I, I, it's it's unfortunate because it's like my peers are stuck in the hamster wheel. Mm. Niggas right next to me. Some of my peers that was close to me, there's distance that's starting to form between us because, because I'm Hollywood, because mm. I'm traveling a little now. Or mm. I, like, I don't have time to, like, hang out because I got to be productive. And right. it's like, I don't know, niggas, I, I mean... Like I said, I feel bad, but at the same time, like I'm not with the broken people trying to help broken people. Mm. I'm, I need to go be who I'm to become, and then it's like I can walk in the light and niggas can follow. But like mm. until then, it's like trying to do it from the ground level. Like nah, you gonna get hit with something trying down right. here doing it, you know? So I don't know. You seem man. pretty well rounded, so you know it's just because he's a guy. I don't mean he got to give advice for the the niggas. Like, what advice would you have for women, little women, growing women? Um, I say like reform thoughts. You, nah, Stop. I mean, Tio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's. I feel like I to cannot. a certain extent, it's like out here, it's. It's hard for, for, for women. Like I, I mean, I, I feel for y'all a little bit because it's like y'all y'all gotta walk this walk. You gotta look a certain way, but then it's like all those folks in the road. It's like damned if you do, damned if you don't. Mm. Type shit. So I say just like you gotta do what matters to you. I, I encourage everybody to like you. You do this shit only one time. Mm. You only get to live once. Mm. So it's like. Like, you know, I think everybody kind of understands the ramifications of the shit they do. I feel like you should, everybody should have a mentor or somebody they should communicate with. I don't give a fuck if you're younger or you older. But other than that, 
live your life like live your life live right. your life I mean, I hope you ain't gotta fuck thirty niggas to figure it out. <laughs> um, because because with all with all due respect, there's if you could communicate with some of the matriarchs of your neighborhood, I'm pretty sure a few of them did it for you already. Right. Yeah. Kind of tell you how that goes. She yeah. sucked dick, so you didn't have to. So, you know that. I'm saying. Here we go. Here we go. Turn something like it, inspiring and positive like that into that shit. It's just baseline. You know what I mean? All right, man. Last question. Cash ain't here, but this is his number one question, man. When you see these five letters, CWTFB, choose what the future brings. What does that mean for you, man? <laughs> what does that mean for me? Yeah. Question. Can I, can I give you a question? Yeah, why not? You plan on having me back? Absolutely. motherfucking nigga. All right, I'll tell you then. Mm. That was prom- good. I promise. That was good. I this thing is good. Yeah. <laughs> Never had that before. All right. That was a great answer. Yeah. So so let's do that, man. So <laughs> I'm ready to see it. Yo, man, we have my man Iman Le Ali in here, man. This is episode 129, man. Um, I am Charlie Machine. She is Chanel Shante, the Empress, man. We are CWTFB Radio. Choose what the future brings. Black culture through music. And we love y'all. Yeah. Till next week, man. We out of here. Peace. 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 Peace.